that's the who I am slide, and you know it, so we can go ahead. Um, well, author, consultant, speaker, trainer, blah, 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 uh, company reseller. I'm currently doing some consulting work on a project based on this technology, so the, the, the framework is actually based on actual development projects. It's not just, and that will be only the last part of the session. The first part is what Delphi provides and then what we can add to the, the, the Delphi uh, structure. So the idea is to try to understand what REST is, the Delphi data and server components, what they do, what they are for, um, using the wizard to build a demo application, focus on a few things, maybe not everything. Um, how you can use jQuery to well, write the client code more easily. And then, well, this is an extra extension to the core uh, architecture that's available. There is a specific session, that's it. There is a specific session on new features in Delphi XE2, but that's meant for people who have already used it in XE. So I, I will mention new things, but that's not going to be the, the, the focus. Okay, so what is REST? REST. The, there is an acronym, Representational State Transfer. No one cares. It's, it's just a name. Uh, there is a theory behind it, but no one cares about the theory. The idea is I can query a web service through an interface and I refer to components slash objects with a URL. That's kind of the core, the core idea. So everything is stateless because it's based on HTTP. Uh, and everything can be tiered, can be cached along the way because it's just plain request, plain response. Uh, there is not, nothing like give me the next record because that's not stateless. Uh, giving me a record two is fine, but not giving me the next record. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, so everything should be specifically intended for single request, single response, goodbye. Adding some notion of session is useful, but is already kind of beyond the core uh, idea. And it's meant to be the way to do web services over the web while SOAP was meant to do web services in many possible ways. And SOAP uses HTTP but ignores HTTP, so it doesn't take advantage of any feature of HTTP. Like when you want to do security, you do, w, you do WS security rather than using HTTPS. But <laughs> HTTPS is easier, works better, it's easier to achieve, it's just a flag on your server and a class on your client. So rather than reinventing everything, the idea of, of REST is just use HTTP. HTTP is quite good. It's, it's quite a common protocol. Let's go for it. You get everything. You get compression. You get encryption. You get protection. You get security. You get everything on top of HTTP. It's solid. It's there. It's proven. It's so it's very easy. Uh, you just refer to an object. You ask for one of the four core operations. Get, uh, create a new one, put. Uh, update or delete, that's all you do. Nothing more than that. But you can do everything with those four operations. Um, so it's just using HTTP. The data is generally moved in XML or JSON, but I mean, maybe tomorrow we'll have another standard, doesn't really matter. Uh, and so the idea is you just make a URL-based request and receive a response. Then there are authorization mechanisms, authentications, and all of all other things built on top of it. And every single vendor, like Amazon, Google, Facebook, build it in a totally different way, that, and that is confusing. But by itself, the core features are extremely uh, simple and straightforward. Um, OK, so but we're not going to try to use those services but uh, focusing just on writing a server ourselves. Okay, so we want to create a server that exposes an interface. And we are also going to use the, the Delphi wizard to create a simple JavaScript application that is one of the possible clients for the server. As you might have seen, you can also use, like in this case, Android and an Android application, the ITDF kind application, as another client for the same 
REST server. So it's an open system, but the focus I'm going to, to and you can also use Delphi for create the client, which, which is often a very good idea, but there is more and more requests to use the browser as the client, and that's kind of the focus I'm going to, to keep in this session. So let's do it. Uh, file, new, other, and um, I'm going to create a data snap server, and then I'm going to create a data snap REST application. Okay, because that's my specific goal. It's going to generate extra files compared to a plain uh, data snap server. Standalone, console, or you can have a plugin for ISAP. You can also turn it into an Apache library if you want to. Which port? Could be 80, 8080, 9999, whatever. And you can turn on HTTPS with, with a click if you want. I don't tend to use this as deployment. My model is just create it on an odd port and then use Apache or IIS with a proxy service. So the files you service directly from the web server and then the dynamic pages you serve through the proxy gateway. This is better than creating a DLL that's hooked into with the web server because the web server has to load the DLL and then if you want to replace the DLL, you have to stop the web server. If you stop the web server, you stop the DLL and you lose the session information. While if you have two executable, uh, they just, you can start and stop them independently. So you can stop and start your service without having to stop the web server and vice versa. You can stop the web server if there's anything, any problem, but the service is still there with the sessions for the users. And also, you can put them onto different computers. Or what I do, for example, on my website, one is, uh, is the host and one is inside a virtual machine. So I'm hosting my Delphi applications on a Linux box because they actually run in the virtual machine. But from the outside, it's Apache serving those pages. It's Apache service the, serving the rest, the rest operation. So it's completely transparent what's behind the scenes. OK, so we'll just go for the standard. Um, there are some helper things that you can ask in, in, to the wizard. If you don't, you can just, it's just individual components you can drop to the form later on. So you can ask for authorization or not, mobile connectors and other things. Um, one new feature that's been extended, that's been added, is the uh, option to create um, an extra. Rather than creating two data modules, you get, you get three which might be confusing, but that's a good thing, do it. I mean, go for it. <laughs> because the idea is that, well, we get, I get to, I'll be, get back to the reason afterwards, but that, just go for it. That's the difference from the default that I'm adding, and it's a new feature in XE2. Uh, I'm going to use the component, that's fine. Go for, well, a folder. I need a folder. Um, not here. Source, wait, sessions, code rate. Well, it's not code rate, but same thing. Okay, ping, ping, ping. Devcon server. Okay, so now we have our, um, our application. Uh, there is a main form that's almost useless, it's not really useless. Uh, since what we are creating is a web broker application, the form actually hosts the web server. It's a, a full-blown web server that then interfaces with the web broker system. If you create an ISAP DLL, you get everything else but this main form with the web server. The web server is not visible, but it's a um, class, it's actually an in the HTTP web broker bridge that's inside this form. So that's actually quite useful. Everything else is just, you can throw it away. But this one is, is uh, useful, okay? So we won't care about the, the main form. We just, well, let's save everything with the default names. These are good, okay, go for it. Um, so let's close this one. Now we have, uh, that's the new, that's the new uh, structure. It's a, data, it's a global data module that has, by default, two things. The, the, a, a component representing the web, the data snap server. It's the S server. It's, it's 
it just sits there. It doesn't do anything. It has like two properties. OK, it, you need it. It's kind of the component that keeps the entire application together, kind of the application object in a VCL application. But it's not that you work on it much. OK, uh, it's auto start, and it's OK. You can do a few more things. But that's it. So that's the, just the conduit that keeps everything together. And then you have one or more server classes. Server classes act as class factories. So they are not the objects you want to create, but they refer to the objects you want to create. So for every server class, I say, OK, this is a class that is available. The system, when every time there is a request for that class, the system will create an object, call the method, return the value, destroy the object, and that's it. That happens for each and every request, because we are under REST HTTP. So even if the server class has a property that is called uh, life cycle, we want to create one object for the session, or global, or for each invocation, this session is completely ignored, so it's not used. Uh, so if, it's like if you had invocation. Uh, it's, session doesn't work for a REST uh, server. And that's reasonable, because we are stateless under HTTP, so it won't make much sense. There is another way to save session information inside session objects, and that's where you save data that you want to persist among requests from the same user. But no, don't use the object. The objects just are created, destroyed, created, destroyed, created, destroyed. Um, OK, we can add more. We might add more. I don't know. Well, let's go for it for now. Um, now, this is a new unit because in the past, these two components, like until the FXC, were on this other unit. That's the uh, web module. OK, this is created when you get an incoming HTTP request. Uh, it has a few dispatchers. Dispatchers are a component that can handle specific URLs and respond something. Like this file dispatcher can handle specific URLs and return a local file. Just load the file in memory and return it. The web dispatcher gets everything that starts with uh, data snap, data snap something, and says, hey, that's mine, and will process it through the data snap engine. So the REST requests go through this, go through this dispatcher. Okay, and the other are helper things. So they're not uh, fundamental. The other thing that this has, like any web broker uh, application, has action. So these individual URLs are managed with these actions. These are web actions, the same in web broker since like Delphi 4, 3, whatever. And so you have a reverse string URL that well, basically, is tied to a producer, which means we'll use this component that is connected with an HTML file. So it will end up loading this file and get out a page like this. Okay, that's kind of the, the default mechanism. Uh, let's keep this. Of course, we can look at the code. Now, in the past, as I mentioned, the data snap server was in this page. But the problem is that this page is created when an, there is an incoming request inside that thread. So what you are, would end up doing by default in Delphi XC is that every time you get a request, you're creating the data snap server and you're destroying the data snap server. Well, it's not really they are cached. There are, but like at the beginning, you might create five of them because the, the if they are kind of optimized, so they are pre-created. So you don't have, a, it's not one global object. This structure is not global, it's, it's a per request structure. If you need something global, like the single data snap server object, uh, then you have to use a, a separate uh, data module that is created at the beginning and remains in memory until the end. So it's actually a good change having the, those. Of course, you can do it manually also in XE, just create the data model, move the components there, but that's a better, a better default. OK, so this application can handle REST requests and file requests and actions, which is HTML file requests. Kind of that treated differently. OK, um, what else? Oh, we have the server methods unit. So this is the actual target. So what happens inside the, um, the server class, we use this event handler, get class, saying, hey, the class that 
the objects you want to create and, and you surface methods of these objects is T server methods one. So T server methods one is just a T component in compiled with this specific um, setting. This is because the um, method mapping predates the extended RTTI, so it uses yet another uh, dynamic mechanism. It's not the new RTTI. Might want to change it, but whatever. So I just, you need this method info on, and that's actually not a big deal. And then these methods are the method that I expose, and they are very simple, just reverse string. The result of this application, if we run it, and I haven't changed anything, just recompile the, the default, and we start it oh, while well, allowing the firewall to go through. Now what we can do, we can open the browser, and we get that file, this one here, and we can, uh, visible at runtime, with some extra information and things, but that's basically it. Okay, so that's just a static HTML page. But the static HTML page has internal code that I'll show in a second to call the, uh, the REST server. Now, before we do that, let's call it manually. Well, it's already there. Um, so we can call data snap, data snap. We can ask for a REST execution. We want to use the class T server methods one and call the reverse string method and pass as parameter hello, and that's the result. The result is some JSON data structure with a result object that has internally the, an array of values which has the single value. Hello, while well, reversed. 